Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Dark Souls Lost Isolith Edition. I uh, had a bit of an embarrassing moment when I got stuck in Lost Isolith in my last run here, the last video. But, uh, you know, Homeward Bone, it solves all problems, and we are headed just right on back up in here. So, we are after the fourth and final Great Lord Soul... Soul or Soul Shard? Soul Peace, something, I don't know. Um, we have... somewhere, here we go, three of them! So we have the Bequeathed Lord Soul Shard that went to Seath the Scaleless. We have the Bequeathed Lord Soul Shard that went to the Four Kings of the Nulanda Ruins. They were consumed by the Abyss and Dark, and they became foul monstrosities obsessed with the art of life drain, stealing humanity from other living creatures, which is pretty awesome, and we were actually a member of that covenant for a little bit as well. Um, that was the first of the four that we got, actually. And then the soul of Gravelord Nido. We haven't actually looked at this one. So this is the soul of Gravelord Nito, the first of the dead. This Lord soul was discovered at the dawn of the Age of Fire. Grave Lord Nito administers the death of all manner of beings. The power of this soul is so great that it satiates the Lord Vessel, despite the fact that much of its energy has already been offered to death. Kind of cool. I like Grave Lord Nito. He's, uh, he's a fun character. Okie dokie. Killing lots of these stone statues. Maybe. Trying to, at least. Like I said in the last video about these stone statues, and they're not a huge threat, but wow, there sure can be a lot of them. And I am a high enough level, and I have decent enough fire resistance in my armor. My armor's fully upgraded. Like, it just... Not a huge threat. Not a threat at all. So I'm not worried. Now, I believe there's an item back here. Somewhere, maybe? Is there really nothing back here? That's a letdown. Is there something on the other side? No. Nope. Okay, well, big old waste of time. That's fine. We're also about to encounter a new enemy. The Chaos Eater. It is, I believe, the only creature in the game that can actually drop the red Titanite chunks with any sort of reliability. And I think it's super duper rare. Like, I think it's really, really tough to get red chunks from these things. But the red chunks are needed. They're necessary. Hello, item. If you are trying to upgrade... Uh, your weapon's down a fire or chaos path. Chaos being kind of an advanced version of fire. There it is. Hello. Oh. The geometry of these roots is driving me crazy. So, it has an interesting couple of attacks. It also has weird geometry. That right there. That stuff that it spits out, I think, is corrosive. I th think... It's either corrosive or toxic. Oh, hello. Look at that. Red Titanite chunk. Look at that. Um, I think it's either corrosive or toxic, meaning it will either destroy your armor that you have equipped, or it will just toxic you and then kill you. We're going to see a couple of those. Over here, another quick little detour. There's an item right there that I would like to drop down and get. So 
soul of a hero. 10,000 souls. Not bad at all. So there's an item here. It's weirdly difficult to get, as you just saw, because the game likes to kind of keep your momentum and have you slide out. I think it's just another soul, large soul of a great soldier or something. I don't know. Not super important. Not something that I usually waste time and effort trying to get. So I'm not going to bother going back over there to get that again. Oh. Ah, geometry of these roots is just killing me. Okie dokie. Uh, another crazy hollow pyromancer character. Wearing the gold-hemmed black armor. And we get invaded by Kirk. Of course we do. Oh, hello. That hurt. Hello again, Kirk. Knight of Thorns. How are you? Oh, and I don't have my poise ring, so I can't actually power through your attack there. That's fine. Kirk is easy. Kirk is always a pushover. This guy right here, however, is kind of a jerk. Guy or gal? I don't know. Um, let's grab Kirk's power. Oh, we got the barbed straight sword. That's awesome. We got Kirk's weapon. Are you out of spells yet? What the hell? Can I kill you, please? There we go. Hmm, I don't usually have so much trouble with that hollow. But we do get a, a, uh, a new catalyst for that. The Izalith catalyst. Used for casting sorceries, of course. Which again, again, not a thing that I am ever going to use in this playthrough. But you know, fun to get. There is an achievement for get... Oh, I don't want that. Oh yeah, and you can grab me. Oh, I don't want to be here. I think we just died. Can we climb out? Oh, we can climb out. Look at that. And that took, like, no damage. So that must be corrosive. That probably just, like, chewed the crap out of my armor. Durability, 400 out of 600. 260 out of 300. Yeah, so I think that just did a lot of durability damage. That's unfortunate. This should be a red chunk. Oh, a pyromancy. My mistake. I thought there was a red chunk around here somewhere. Um, anyway, Kirk the Knight of Thorns, we encountered him twice before. Once in the Demon Ruins, on our way to this place, actually, of all things. And also uh, once in the depths, in the sewers. Uh, in the uh, Basilisk area. So, that is, this was our third and final encounter. Um, hmm... Mm hmm. I hate this next boss fight. I'm just... I'm debating. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do here. <sighs> We're going to Homeward Bone. I'm going to go do something with this humanity. I don't like having this much on me, because this boss I'm likely going to die over and over and over again at. Just the way it is. I've accepted it. Oops, I've come to terms with it. Not much we can do about that. Tiny bit more strength. So what can we do with eight humanity? Well, we could go give it to somebody at a covenant somewhere. Or we could go use it to kindle some bonfires. No need to go to the crystal caves or any of these places again. Undead parish, no. Depths, no. Ulysseal, not really. Altar of the Gravelord, that's from killing Nito. No points in that. Letter of Chaos, no. The Abyss. No, Dark Moon Tomb. Hmm. Not really anything that I really care to kindle. We could go rejoin the Dark Wraiths and then go turn in a bunch of humanity there. And we could get the uh, first 
rank increase in the covenant there. I don't know what sort of prize we might get. I don't even know if we do get a prize. Let's go check it out. It'll be fun. It'll give me something to do, at least. I just, I really dread this boss that we're going up against next. And I do not mind trying to put it off a little bit. I have no issue with that. Hello, Kath. Can we rejoin your covenant? What is it? I am your guardian. Go on. State your wish. You're so creepy. And now I get to offer humanity one at a time. Offer covenant item. Or ask for covenant item. Oh, oh, oh. He will give me a cracked red eye orb, I think, if we don't have any. The goal is to use the orbs to invade other players, then kill the other players to take their humanity. And then you come back here and you turn the humanity into the Darkstalker. I hate that you can't just turn it all in all at once. Like, I have ten. Here, take ten. Here's ten. Here you go. Take it all. And rank one, what did we get? The Red Eye Orb. That's awesome-ish. Kind of. Offer humanity, enter covenant, warp, talk. They failed me. Every last one of them. They were strong, but saw not the truth. I am certain that you will prove different. Okay. Don't really know who you're talking about. Maybe... Nope. I have no idea. Okay. Alright. Whatever. Farewell. You just keep chewing. Ugh. Alright, well, that's one thing dealt with. I should probably go back to... the Undead Parish. We're gonna go just repair all of our gear across the board. Did I... do I have a repair box, actually? I have not actually paid attention to that. No, I have the bottomless box. Never bought the repair box. That's fine. Let's just repair all of our crap. Well, go get you. Ooh, that was a thousand souls. Super cheap. I can't believe how cheap it is to repair gear in this game. Like it's it's such a non-issue for a mechanic. As opposed to Dark Souls 2, where I regularly break my equipment. Okay, what else do we want to do? Well, let's go back to the Daughter of Chaos. I don't think we can actually warp back to Lost Isolith. I think I might have to run through all that again. Which is not the end of the world. I'll probably just edit that bit out. But, uh, something to keep in mind here. Yes, so, Quailag's Domain. Um... Actually, the reason I wanted to come here is for this. So after defeating Kirk, the Knight of Thorns, three times, his body shows up here. Just like how we had to defeat the Xanthus King Jeremiah inside the painted world of Ariamis. It's a lot of descriptors and full names for things. Um, after we defeated Jeremiah, we were able to loot Jeremiah's corpse and get his gear. After we invaded and killed the Knight Lutrec, we were able to loot his corpse and get his gear. So we killed Kirk three times. Boom. The Armor of Thorns. Which is pretty cool. It's just what it sounds like. Just spiky, thorny armor. The Helm of Kirk, Knight of Thorns, and notorious member of the Dark Wraiths, which is actually a typo, because this is not Dark Wraith territory. He's a notorious member... He's a notorious invader and member of the Daughters of Chaos Covenant. He's actually... Officially, according to uh, the director, the producer of the game, Kirk is uh, like a devoted follower of the silent lady here, the white witch lady, and he's 
hunting other people to get humanity to kind of help ease her pain over there. So anyway, a dense patch of thorns grows from its surface. It is a fitting item for the murderous Kirk. For simply wearing it and rolling it, one can damage enemies. So yes, if you just equip this and you roll into an enemy, when you bump into them while rolling, you will do damage. It's I think it's pretty insignificant, but, you know, just a fun little thing anyway. Yeah, okay, so I have to actually run back. That's unfortunate. Not quite the end of the world. Especially because we can take the shortcut here. Um... Hmm. Not exactly where I wanted to go. Oh, you know what? Actually... We can take the shortcut. We can try to take the shortcut. No promises. I am no good at fighting these giant Titanite demons, as I'm sure you are well aware, if you've been watching the entire Let's Play up to this point. I might just try to run past it. But back down here, by paying 30 humanity and opening, or paying 30 humanity to the Daughters of Chaos Covenant, we were able to open this door. These little maggot things here. Oh yeah, look, see, there's Solaire. I told you he came here. I told you so. Was it all a lie? Have I done this all for nothing? Oh, my dear son. What now? What should I do, my son? My dear, dear son. Was it all a lie? Oh, my. Or, and we thought that he was kind of losing it and falling to despair earlier. He's really hit the bottom of the barrel now. So yes, like I said, Solaire shows up here, and if we had not already killed the unique non-respawning enemy that drops the uh, the Sunlight Maggot earlier, Solaire would have found it, killed it, and he would be wearing the Sunlight Maggot on his head, and he would also be insane and try to kill us. Because he would have gone hollow. Luckily, that's a thing that we don't have to worry about. So Solaire is not going to die here. He will continue on, and we will maybe encounter him later. Um, but this... Yeah, so paying 30 humanity... And reaching the final rank, the final tier of the Daughters of Chaos Covenant will let you open that door. Therefore, being able to come in here and kill the Sunlight Maggot, and then also use this shortcut. Although, it's a shortcut of death, because, because of that thing. That is, I think, the strongest iteration of these Titanite Demons. I believe it's super, super strong. This is a really narrow hallway. It does respawn, also, so it will always be available for killing and getting the Demon Titanite. Also, we're on a super narrow bridge. I don't know if you've noticed that. Really good and easy to kill if you use ranged attacks, like sorceries or uh, lightning miracles. I'm just going to avoid it. Thank you. Thank you. And voila. We are back in Demon Statue Land. Yep, I fell for it. I was running for the item. You all saw it, right? You all saw the item? There was an item there. I was running for it. Welcome back to Chaos Eater Central. This is actually exactly where I wanted to go, believe it or not. Because we have another quest that we can uh, push forward here in this location. Although we do need to deal with these Chaos Eaters. It's going to be tough. I usually have some sort of ranged attack in here. Um, we're going to want purple moss. And then I think we're fine. 
So... Yeah, this place is a little bit of a maze, that's okay. There's the quest that we're going to be dealing with. That man, our good friend. Oh, I think it's that thing spazzing out that's making that noise. Um, by the way, I know that I was grabbed by one of these earlier and we got to see that whole thing, but uh, you don't want to try to do a plunging attack against them. It does not work. If you couldn't figure that out by looking into the gaping maws from above here. I'd like to find a way up here to deal with this one. I don't know if I can hit it from down here. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Ranged attacks would be handy at this point. But again, not a thing that I have. It's okay. Fine with that. Just means I need to come up with new strategies for some of these things. That's where all the fun is, right? Trying something new. Hmm. Oops. I think we're going to go with the Rusted Iron Ring. I think it'll help when we go down below to fight more of those creatures. But I'm not going to do that just yet. At least I don't think I am. So, our good friend, the Onion Knight, Ziegmeier of Katarina. He, when we go talk to him, yeah, okay, so it's swamp water. It's just like being back in Blight Town. Um, when we go talk to him, he will see these creatures. He'll want to jump down here and fight them and defeat them. This is an interesting scenario. There are a handful of different outcomes here, depending on just kind of what happens. Here we go. This will take us back up to the other one here. Um, so he will get poisoned, he will fight them. If he dies, then he dies, and then we're all sad. If he survives, but his health is low, below, like, 25% or so, he dies anyway. He just, he succumbs to the poison and whatnot, and just doesn't make it. If he survives with more than half of his health, then he survives for realsies, and we get to continue on with his quest. If he drops down there and we've already killed all the creatures, he's sad that we killed all the creatures and that he didn't get to fight, and his quest ends. So, we need to thin out the ranks down here a little bit. Um, these are bottomless pits, by the way, those squares of death. Um, I'm going to fight this one over here first. So, Ideally, this would be a good place to use like a bow and arrow or something, which in theory I could do. I could just use my crossbow. Um, I want to damage these enemies, but not kill them. Can you stop doing that, please? There we go. Um, or at least not kill all of them. I think we can kill a couple of them. It's those four right there. So let's maybe kill one or two of you and not get grabbed. Please don't kill both of them. Okay. And then that one's still alive. Let's go back up and we'll talk to Sigmire now. Hopefully you don't fall down the pit and die. No. We might have just completely botched that quest. I will be really sad if that happens. I'll be like really, really sad if that happens. Dang it. I was debating whether I should have left two of them alive. I think that's the threat though. Or that's the like that's the big issue, is if I go down there to fight any of them. I will aggro all of them. It's going to be gone, isn't it? And none of them respawn. Damn it. 
Ah, <sighs> well... Thus ends the quest with Ziegmeier. That sucks, this last part's always really tough. Well, now I'm sad. We can at least finish looting this place, though. There's the red titanite slab. Upgrade a fire or chaos weapon to plus 15. That's really, really a shame. I honestly didn't think that was going to happen. I thought that if we ran away from that enemy, then we would just be away from it, and it would just kind of come back to the middle and chill. Well, now we get to see the sad Zygmire ending. Where are you at? You're over here. Hello. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to kill them all. Ah. So there you are. Wait, did you defeat those dire creatures? Yes. I'm sorry. You never failed to impress. Well, one. This knight of Catherine left. Take this as a token of my death. I feel like I'm always thanking you. I curse my own inability. It's that right there at the end. I curse my own inability. Now he feels just ineffective, and he's kind of lost his will to go on. He feels useless, and, uh, and he's just going to go wander off and die somewhere. I feel like I'm... I could. And now I'm sad. I mean, you can go down there and pretend to fight. Does that help? I feel like I'm always... I... Yeah, I don't think it helps. I'm sorry. I really didn't think it was going to turn out like that, if that's any consolation. I mean, I know it's not, but... Okie dokie, now that I completely botched that, I guess it's time to uh, try to find our way out of here. Let's see if I can remember how to actually get out of here, though. It's one of these. Is it this one? Did I land on the right one on accident? Yeah, and it lets us get up out of here. Let's go and moss up and get that to stop. Yeah, fun little uh, side quest area there. I guess, for lack of a better description. Okie dokie, Kirk's not going to invade again. Yeah, Dark Wraith ahead, thank you, I know. Um, the Pyromancer that we killed is going to be permanently dead. Those couple of Chaos Eaters do respawn here, and uh, you know what? To hell with it, we're just going to go for the boss. This boss sucks. Just a really, really irritating mechanic for this boss. You'll see what I mean in just a moment here. So, it doesn't do a lot of damage. It's kind of a physics-based thing. The boss just kind of pushes you around and will actually like push you into holes and just you will die in one hit if you're not careful. 
so there's really not much we can do about this, but uh, there it is. This is the bed of chaos. It is a weird living demonic tree monster with these glowing orange spots. So there are three glowing orange spots here that we need to deal with. And the fight gets progressively harder as we deal with each one of them. So... There's one severed. Usually, it's easiest to continue in this boss fight to just use a Homeward Bone at this point, and then try again starting from the middle, because then you only have to cover half as much ground running from like the middle over to the left side, rather than from the right all the way over to the left. I'm going to give it a shot, but I am fully expecting to die here. And you'll see what I mean, because the floor is going to start collapsing. Yep. Like that. That's what I was expecting to have happen. So, I should have just Homeward Boned. Honestly, that's the best way to deal with the boss. Oh, and I didn't rest at the other bonfire. I feel like an idiot. Oh, because I bypassed the bonfire. Hmm. You have a bit of an interesting predicament here. I don't even think I need the lava ring. Don't want to go that way, I want to go this way. And... boss again. The nice thing about this boss is that anything that you've done to it carries over even after you die or homeward bone out or whatever the case may be. So that's... Nice. Yep. There's one big old fiery tentacle thing up there. So we've got to be super careful. Part of the floor is going to be falling apart here. Like I said, it pushes you back and that's the biggest threat here. Like that. Unfortunately, this is just one of those boss fights. I don't know which parts of the floors fall apart well enough to be able to just sprint through there. I know some people I've watched on YouTube just like they know where the floor falls, so they know where to run to get through that in one piece. That's not me, though. Okie dokie. Gonna edit this out. Be back in a moment. All right, here we go again. Hopefully the floor stays collapsed. Otherwise, I think I kind of know where I'm going. Good, it did stay collapsed. Lost all our souls, but that's okay. This is one of those fights I just want it to be over with. I don't care about losing souls or any of that. Oh no. Break that one. Alright, two down. One more to go, right in the middle. This one sucks because you have to run at it and make a jump. What the hell? I know it's a bad idea and I'm gonna die again anyway, but I'm gonna we're gonna give it a run. Oh yeah, you do fire explosions now. Okay, this is where we came from in the middle. So the floor is going to collapse here in the middle. And we're going to get swatted away. That's the part that I remember from this fight that sucks. 
And now I think my timing's all off. Do your fire thing, please. Thank you. Run and jump. Ah, too far to the left. Okay. Alright, here we are yet again. This last part is not easy, but literally straightforward because we just run forward and jump in that pit until we actually land on the branch down below. Which sucks because it's not a freaking straight tree branch, it's... Oh. See, why do you do that? I feel like this part would be a lot easier if I had, uh... If I were below 25% of my weight limit. I think that extra little bit of moving faster would be kind of critical. Oh my gosh, I can't even get to the jump. Why are you doing this to me, game? Just let me make the jump, please. Let me even attempt the jump, please. Did I go too far? Oh. <laughs> I went too far to the right. I overcorrected. There we go. Made it. Look at that. Not entirely out of the woods yet. Could still get killed by the uh, fire part. Like fire explosions and whatnot. Have to roll our way through these stupid tree branches. But uh, here's the actual bed of chaos right here. It's this little bug. Hello. Are you fucking kidding me? 